signs up at Wrigley Field? Shocking for some. We're going to talk about that and a lot more on this edition of Political Update. And welcome to Political Update. I'm Paul Lisnick. I'll be joined by a couple of the aldermen in our city later on in the show. Alderman Scott Waggispack will join me. But joining me now, I mentioned Wrigley Field is one of the gems of the city. And so you're the lucky alderman that gets to uh, impact it greatly. Joining me is Alderman Tom Tunney of the 44th Ward. Full disclosure, I live in the 44th Ward, but it's nice to see you, Alderman. Good afternoon, Paul. Um, let's start with Toyota. Uh, we're picking up the paper. Right we're so, we're, let's go right to it. We're seeing pictures, and, and it may be, you know, that's such a volatile issue. By the time this gets on the air, maybe it'll be resolved. But for one thing is, I know you didn't want to see the sign there. No, we didn't want to see the sign there, especially between the foul pole lines. We've allowed for a lot of signage around Wrigley Field over a number of years since the ballpark was landmarked. What we're asking is really, instead of a piecemeal approach, come up with a comprehensive uh, sign package where signage would be, could be allowed, and possibly where areas would be prohibited. Tom Ricketts, who's the Cubs chair, of course, he, he lets people know, look, I've got it, I need money too. I mean, this could have been a lot worse, right? I mean, this, he could have done anything with Wrigley Field that he wanted to, I suppose, in terms of closing it or doing something else. We should be happy that much of the character has been preserved. And we give credit to the city and the Tribune organization working together on the landmark ordinance. We did a plan development that allowed the bleacher expansion and also a proposed triangle building which is yet to be built, all within the confines, no pun intended, of the landmark ordinance. So if for any reason that the Cubs decided that Brigham Field is not their home, and I don't know how they could, that, that, that stadium would remain a stadium. Uh, it's a very congested area, as you've said. Parking okay. issues, a new hotel wants to come, there are all sorts of things, and you've got to deal with all of that. But I want to talk about the vendors for a moment, okay. because the Wrigley Field vendors who are out there saying, leave us alone, we're just, we're just trying to sell our peanuts and our shirts, and uh, the alderman wants us out. And they're saying you want them out because you're protecting those permanent businesses that are around. The Sun-Times said in an editorial, uh, you know, no one's hurt, so there's nothing to fix. Well, let me, let me say something. That vending around Wrigley Field is an age-old tradition. Okay. And so we're not obviously trying to push the vendors out. They've been allowed to sell on private property, un unlike any other stadium in Chicago. And the fact that they're actually selling on the public way, which means they're mobile, um, is is been very permissive. They have licenses, so, though. They have licenses. Yes. Or should. <laughs> yeah. They should, and and for the most part, they do. But we need to get the, we need to get the intent of the ordinances to keep them moving. And when they get the congested corners of Clark and Addison and Addison Sheffield, it's almost impossible to move. So that is not only the vendors but the street performers. We're actually looking to provide some safe areas both for the for the vendors and of course public safety for for the uh, for the ball players and the and the visitors to the park. Well, again, the comment about public safety again. The Sun Times said there's been no tragic accident. So is it a matter of but there could be? Oh, well, we don't, we don't want to be reactive as an alderman, and I don't want to be reactive. I want to be as proactive, working with the community, working with the police, and working with the vendor community. And let me I must say that vending around Wrigley Field is probably the most liberal vending in the entire nation. So I think there's some issues of where we're restricting it, but by and large, we've been very fair. But I'll still buy my peanuts out there if I want. You will. Okay. Um, lakefront liquor licenses. The city's trying to find money any way it can. One of Mayor Daly's proposal is let's double the number of liquor licenses along the lakefront. I get the positive aspect to it. There's some dangers involved, too, isn't there? That's more sure. drinking. Well, first of all, um, there's a number of concessions that have remained dormant in, along the lakefront. And one would think, why are they dormant? because the park district and or private vendors don't ha have the capital or the confidence that, yes, there's 10 busy weekends during the summer, but this is a 365-day opportunity. So they have been, you know, they've been sitting dormant, the, the clock tower um, and, and others, and we thought the Olympic bid would probably be a, a, a regeneration yeah. of those uh, facilities. So I'm not opposed to adding liquor as an opportunity there. It, it, and it's not a beer garden. And it's 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 a it's a restaurant. It's an enclosed restaurant. So there were there were definitely some parameters about how liquor would be designed and served in at the lakefront venues. And, am I right? Part of it, at least, what I'm reading is that you won't be able to leave the premises with liquor as well. Correct. Yes. And I have a specific situation at Diversity, and very close to where I live, um, where it is within 100 150 feet of the driving range. 
and we have a 40-story building there, and I want to make sure that they're supportive of whatever liquor uh, and whatever whatever food establishment with liquor uh, comes to the driving range, which is very mm -hmm. successful in its own right. 